What's up guys, it's Rob here, and today we're going to be talking about Greenwich Generation Holdings, ticker symbol GREE, -E. and this stock recently became uh, this ticker symbol. Before it was this ticker symbol, it was ticker symbol SPRTsupport.com, and uh, recently that company went through with a merger, which turned into GREE, -E. and I've made a couple of videos on this in the past, and I know that in the comment section at least, a lot of you guys seem to be asking questions and asking me to cover this more, so I'm going to be doing that in this video. I'm going to be answering some questions, explaining what happened with this merger, and uh, some things that I think might be currently going on with this stock. So let's take a look at the chart first of all. And you can actually see this is the GREE -E chart. And what I found is very interesting is they have overlaid the SPRT chart uh, prior to the GREE -E stock where it began trading. Uh, and this, is, this gives a very misleading picture actually as to what happened with SPRT and GREE -E because as it stands now, it looks like this stock is actually trading at a fairly high value, right? Much higher than where it was when the merger went through. However, that is not the case because what ended up happening with the merger, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see here, uh, this merger, when SPRT ended the trading day, right before the merger happened, it was at $10.98. And it opened the day, uh, GREE -E opened the next day at $91.06. Now, you are thinking that might be a massive gain. However, if you were a holder of SPRT, then you know that was not a massive gain because every share of SPRT turned into about one eighth of a share of GREE. -E. So it actually directly correlates to the price, right? So this $10.98 price almost exactly correlates to a $91.06 price of GREE -E capitalized, right? If you had $100 in SPRT, at this price, then you had the same $100 in GREE -E at this price. So you can actually see and get a much better picture of just what happened with this stock. Uh, as soon as it became publicly traded as GREE, -E, it just took a massive dump and just went down and down and down. And we're currently trading below uh, $28. So we're trading sub $28. That's a less than a third of the price of this stock, meaning that SPRT, if you extrapolate the situation, which was trading at uh, $10.98 should now be trading for around $4 and something cents. I'm not going to do the exact math, but it's trading in the fours right now. Um, if you know you extrapolate the situation and never underwent the merger, that's where SPRT would be trading. And if you actually look at that around the fours, we're, I'm going to mark it off right here for you guys around $4 and something cents, probably $4.40, $4.20. Um, you can see that if we extend that to the left, it's actually far below where we were trading prior to even SPRT's uh, short squeeze, right? So SPRT underwent a short squeeze, and that is what got this stock a lot of attention. It had a massive short float as a percentage, or a massive short interest as a percentage of the free float. It pumped all the way up to $60 before getting dumped down to 10 right before the merger, likely because institutions knew what was going on and were such heavy shorts on this thing uh, that we actually got up to a 97% uh, short interest as a percentage of the free float. That was incredibly high in my opinion. And uh, now you can see that if SPRT were still trading as SPRT and had never underwent the merger, they would be trading around $4.41, assuming that, you know, uh, all of this price action occurred to SPRT instead. So that seems like it's a fairly low price if you look at the past 30 days. However, I will point out that if you look over the past year, that's still a somewhat high valuation because SPRT was trading around a buck 62 a year ago. And uh, yes, they did have a big rally um, and ended up, you know, more recently trading in these higher valuations, mostly because of the short squeeze, right? Uh, at least for these really high highs that we saw of $60. But uh, for the most part, you know, this is kind of aware we were trading over the past couple of months, but not necessarily over the past year. For a while, we were trading much below that. I haven't really looked into SPRT situation enough to know what caused this massive bump up in price, um, but I assume that it was something fundamental and uh, that it justifies, you know, around a $4 price. So it looks like we have finally started trading around where we were prior to this. Now, what I think about STR, SPRT or GREE -E looking forward is, uh, you know, obviously this thing just keeps getting beaten down. You can see even right now we're breaking through what I had identified as somewhat of a support level, $28.80. Um, you know, these don't always hold. And especially with this stock, you know, we have just been dumping and dumping day after day, getting lower and lower. However, over the past couple of days, we were kind of stagnating around this $28 level, which is why I thought it might be holding. However, looks like that is not the case. We are now dumping through that in a very big way. Um, in which it was strange is that this was actually coming right after some big volume to the upside, right? We had a lot of people buying this thing. Uh, maybe there's some kind of news relating to it because this volume that we see down here absolutely dwarfs the volume uh, that we were seeing earlier in the day. So I will be looking into that and giving you guys an update on that if there's anything that I find in, uh, in probably the next video that I make. But 
Uh, regarding SPR or GREE, you can see on Ortex that there is still very little data that we have for this stock. You can see the short interest. We still don't know um, what the current short interest as a percentage of the free float is. We don't know the short interest change. And uh, this is probably just going to take some time. I mean, they just got around to adjusting this graph. And uh, honestly, they did a pretty poor job of it because this does not paint a picture of what happened with GREE. It actually makes it look like the merger was great for uh, SPRT holders, which it was definitely not. You know, there's a lawsuit going on about that right now. Um, so we're going to have to see what happens with that. But uh, definitely this merger hurt SPRT holders very much, you can see, uh, just based off of the price action that's happened since and is currently ongoing, even on this current bar right here. So with GREE, I have noticed that on Google Trends, we have been uh, kind of decreasing. And you can see over the past, this is only tracking the past week, that we were getting a lot of attention around the time of the merger. And every day it kind of subsides a little bit uh, and we make lower highs. And this, uh, I should explain, the blue line that we have here is GREE, tracking it on Google. And the red line is tracking SPRT. So I think you guys can see that now. Um, that, you know, it does surprise me actually that people are still searching for SPRT. And that kind of alerted me to the idea that maybe a lot of people are just now looking at their portfolio. Maybe they weren't as involved in SPRT stock as a lot of you guys may have been. Uh, and they might be kind of confused about where the heck did my SPRT shares go? Maybe they were holding them for a while and they just look back and uh, they can't find them. A lot of people's shares were actually liquidated for cash, as it turns out. And that could potentially have been one of the main reasons why we were getting dumped so hard um, when we first debuted as GREE. Uh, likely, in my opinion, because a lot of shares were... Uh, able to be liquidated for cash. If you looked at the actual uh, merger agreement, it was stated that some shares, you know, if they were fractional, especially, right, if you had fewer than eight SBRT shares, they could be liquidated, turned into cash, and just given to you. Um, I'm not sure. No one has actually filled me in uh, in the comments on if they've actually received the cash for those shares yet. I think last I heard, some people had contacted their brokerage, uh, Robinhood, and Robinhood said that as soon as GREE sent them the money, hopefully sometime in the following week, uh, this week, I suppose, then they would be sending that money to their account. So I think that's the latest update that I've gotten on GREE and uh, the money actually being distributed for the liquidated shares. But we're going to have to see what happens with that. If anyone has an update on that, please let me know in the comments. Um, other than that, you know, we're just going to have to wait for some more Ortex data to come in because I am very curious to see what the short interest will be on this stock. I think that it could still potentially be fairly high, right? Because we haven't seen much buying pressure for the stock. We've still been fairly bearish. And that means there are more net sellers than buyers. Granted, um, granted that could mean that, you know, people who are uh, basically have been bag holding SPRT shares are getting kind of upset with how this trajectory has been going, with how much it's been sinking. They might be selling their shares and potentially institutions are starting to buy up some more uh, of these shares and cover their short positions a little bit, because if they haven't been, then uh, you know this short interest should still be incredibly high because it was at 97% on SPRT. And uh, you know maybe they were holding some uh, shares of GREE before this thing debuted. I believe someone in the comments pointed out to me that uh, the company that was merging with support.com actually was partly owned by some of the institutions that were shorting SPRT. So that may have been a sneaky way for them to cover their short position without actually having to cover and uh, to get in on uh, basically to wipe out their short position and wipe out their long position before this huge crash. So uh, that's potentially what happened there. But uh, we'll really have to wait for the dust to settle because this is kind of an opaque situation. You know, there's still not a lot of information regarding this stock. And it is very strange to see um, such little information, you know, after a week of trading, still such little information being available for this stock. And uh, people really are left in the dark and don't know what's going on with it. And it just seems to keep dumping and dumping and dumping. And uh, people are bag holding this. I know from the comments, a lot of people have said that they're just holding on to it. And, you know, there is the potential that it will rise again, that obviously, you know, after such negative momentum, maybe if we see the short interest uh, on Ortex, when it's whenever it's revealed, um, there may be a lot more short interest than people are thinking, and that could spur another kind of squeeze. But uh, really, at least for how it looks right now, it's not a great situation for this stock. We are just dumping day after day, and uh, that's really hurting a lot of investors. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video and just uh, break down to you guys and explain you know, my thoughts on GREE and SPRT and the merger that went down and answer some of the questions that you guys may have had. Uh, based on what happened with it. So that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to the channel. Other than that, guys, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.